Thank you today. We come before your throne. We trust you, Lord God, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works inside of us. So, Father, we just welcome your spirit to just do what it does best. And, Father, we ask that you touch the heart of those who may have lost loved ones, who may be having challenges in their lives, who may be challenged on the word in which they're being sown into their hearts. Father, we thank you that the word is being sown on good ground. And Father, that it brings forth a harvest, Lord God, that brings back a hundredfold return in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to touch my mouth and touch the ears of those who are hearing your word on today. And Father, that there will be production on the word, activity on the word, and that you will confirm your word in each and every one of our lives on today. And Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so let me get this music off here. I want to thank you all for joining today. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the Word of God. Let's go ahead and dig in. Um, again, this is going to be a little bit different. I want to walk through a couple of verses because uh, we've been talking about a lot of things and. Um, you know what we want the, the, the purpose of this meeting again is to help us grow in relationship with God. I mean, we're looking to grow with God. We want a personal relationship, an individual relationship. Not that you don't have that, but how can we enhance that and understand the operation of how growing in the spirit or growing in relationship with God, uh, how it works and if there's ways that we can enhance that experience. And so uh, there are some things that, you know, that are written in the book that tells us or gives us instruction on how to grow in the spirit or how to operate in the plan or the operation of it so that we can grow in relationship with God. And so uh, I want to look at that a little bit. We talked last week about our inheritance uh, and really our inheritance is uh, being developed in the spirit, you know, growing in the spirit. Praise God. So I thank God we're just getting started. So glad to have you. Thank you for joining uh, and so just want to let you know that um, last week we dealt with our inheritance, you know, and how we're sealed with the spirit of truth, how the spirit of God works in our life to help us to grow in him. And that's the guarantee that we have. We have a guarantee of the spirit. So last week we talked about building ourselves up in the spirit, but we talked more so about our inheritance. What is our inheritance as a believer? What should we be reaching for? And obtaining because it's something that's laid up for us all right so this week I want to come back on that same ideal topic but just talk a little bit more about how faith grants us access into by grace into the salvation or the inheritance by the Holy Spirit so Holy Spirit is inside of us helping to develop us into the things of God into the plan of God into what God has stored up for us and have reserved for us. Now, of course, we have to seek it. We have to pursue it. But that is the plan. And so understanding how it works is key. You know, we all have our own portion of God. Everybody, everyone's dealt a measure of faith. So we all have our portion or experiences in our personal relationship with God. But collectively, how can we grow more in that relationship and, and making sure we understand how that works? and tap into that. So let's go ahead and start off. Let's, uh, of course, we always start off with Matthew 6, 33, which is the seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto you. Well, this is what are all the things? What, what are all the things that are supposed to be added? And as I mentioned last week, we talked about the inheritance, but there's some other things that has to be added in order to pursue as we're pursuing this. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. I want to start over in Romans. Uh, let's let's start Ch Romans chapter 4 verse 16 so that's Romans 4 verse 16 and I, again you want to probably start having your Bibles with you because I'll do a little less of sharing the scripture on the page uh, only because it just takes a little more time we will share here and there but uh, I want you to have your Bibles I want you to highlight I want you to go back and study and see if what we're saying is true all right so let's let's start with Romans chapter uh, 4 verse 16 and we're going to kind of toggle through a few scriptures here so verse verse 16 says therefore it is of faith 
And remember I told you that anytime you see something italicized, it means that the writer who put the verse together in the book added that. It wasn't originally there. So in some cases, you'll see me bypass the italicized version because it just adds more depth to, um, to the way it was originally uh, written. Uh, so I'll highlight that when I'm doing that. So it says, therefore, a faith that by grace, so for a person who has faith, grace is the thing that is 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 the vehicle that's about to bring you what we're what, what what next on the next side of this verse. So by faith or believing the word of God, you believe you have faith in it. You heard the word, you believe the word, you have faith in the word. It takes you to grace, which God has provided. I want to add a little description because grace and mercy sometimes get, you know, people use them inexchangeably and really they're two separate things. Mercy is you deserve death, but God had mercy on you. We were all in sin. God gave us mercy. Jesus put his blood on the, on the, on the, on the altar of God and God extended us mercy through that blood. And so, but also through that is something called grace which is the empowerment and is part of the inheritance and we receive it through faith in believing God's word. The more faith we have, the more access by grace to receive what is laid up for us. I'm going to say that again. By faith in hearing God's word, faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of so we heard the word of God and we had faith in what we heard and we believed it. And because of the faith that we had in the word, it granted us access into the grace. So you're saved by grace. You receive the inheritance of what's found in salvation by grace in the word of God. So again, let's let's recap that. I want to before we go on, I want to recap this before we go on in this verse. Faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you heard God's word. We all heard God's word one day through a preacher and then or some other means. And you went, oh, I believe that something triggered in you, you and I. And when we believed it, we have faith into in that word that we heard. So now just like Abraham, we're seeds of Abraham. He did the same thing. God told Abraham, get thee out of thy country. I'm going to show you a place that's so far off. He didn't see it. He didn't, he, he had no substance of it other than the word that God spoke to him. So Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. So we are of that same seed. You believe the preacher when you heard the word and you have faith in the word that you heard. And that word that you heard was God. It was from God. And it was the instructions in the way to begin the development of our faith in God's system. Somebody say God has a system. Glory to God. God has a system. Abraham had to operate by it. Enoch had to operate by it. David had to operate by it. Elijah had to operate by it. And you have are operating in the same system. So how does it work? So you heard faith, you believed God, and now you have access into the grace that delivers unto you the salvation of God. They're different. They're not the same. Grace is the vehicle to the salvation or to the inheritance that God has laid up for his children. It's been on reserve. He laid it up so that in a certain time he can cause his children to grow in it. And that's why he won't come until the kingdom is preached. The kingdom must be preached so that people can hear the word, believe the word, receive it and believe it, have faith in it. And then through their faith, they access the grace. And then grace is that vehicle that leads you to the salvation of the plan of God. You're saved by grace through faith. 
All right. Okay. So we gave a little background history so we are on the same page there. So we can lay this foundation on accessing the grace uh, through faith. Accessing the power of grace through faith. Accessing the inheritance of the kingdom by grace through faith. You're saved by grace through faith. Accessing the, 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 the healing power of God by grace through faith. Accessing growing in the spirit of God by grace through faith. You're saved by grace through faith. Praise God. You have access to the kingdom of God and the things being added unto you by grace through faith. You have all the promises of God being granted unto you by grace through faith. You know, you have the ability. I'm going to give you an example before we go any farther. I want to give you an example. If I wanted to get to the grocery store and everything that I needed was at the grocery store to provide for me what I need. My vehicle would be the grace to get me to the grocery store. But I, once I heard I had the vehicle, I applied myself to receive the vehicle. I then got in the vehicle, grace, and I drove to the store, salvation. And in the store are all the things that he has stored up for his children. Praise God. I, okay. All right. So I hope you got that. Now, now let's talk a little bit about now we can dig into the scriptures just a little bit as we dissect and dig into our inheritance. Praise the Lord. Let's begin. Uh, it says Romans chapter four, verse 16. It says, therefore, a faith that it might be by grace. So again, that's the vehicle to the end. The promise might be sure. You have to ask yourself, what is the promise? Last week we talked about an inheritance. What is the promise? The promise, one of the promises is, or the promise, really the promise, because that's, that's, that's singular, is salvation. You have access to salvation, and in salvation is made up, all, all these things are made up. Let, let me read the definition of saved or salvation. Uh, the definition of saved or salvation is, uh, by definition, it is to save, to keep safe, to keep sound, to rescue from danger or destruction. That's number one. Uh, one from injury, to rescue you from injury or peril, to save a suffering one from perishing. And a good example of that, suffering from disease. To make well, which there's a lot in being made well. To be made well means that you made well in your body, you made well in your spirit, you made well in your finances, you made well, you are operating and made well back to the promise that God originally attended for all men. That's being made well. It's not enough for you to be healed, but not be delivered and still be under the influence or have some spirit inspiring you to continue to smoke a a, 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 a marijuana joint or 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 to continue to sex with somebody that but but you your money right but that part ain't well no 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 god wants us healed holistically he wants us whole w-h-o-l-e so to be made well to heal now watch this restore to health and then here's the other part it says to preserve one who is in danger of destruction to save or to rescue to deliver from the penalties of the messianic judgment. Last thing, to save from the evils which obstruct the reception of the Messiah's deliverance. Well, what, what happens? Th this power of grace that we are saved to delivers to us the promises that are found in salvation and grants unto us all that God has promised. Let's keep going. Let's let's go a little bit farther. Now, now let's read the scripture again. It says, therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. And you'll notice that that word seed there is plural. Right. It says it, I mean, singular. it says seed, but not not seeds as being many, but seed is one because it's Abraham's faith in the word he heard that created an operating system in believing God 
and caused it to be counted as righteousness. So God said, hey, you know what? I can work with that. And so now that we're seeking the kingdom and its righteousness, we find the same operating principle. We believe God's word and we adhere to it. We have faith in it. And now we're in the operating system. Well, what is that system? It is by grace. So we are now in the operation of the grace of God, which helps to deliver us the power of Christ. It helps to deliver unto us the might of Christ. So when we say things like be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, how is that possible? By grace, you receive the power of his might, the power of his ability. Another scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How is that possible? It is possible because you have faith in the word. You're in the operating system or you are a seed of Abraham operating in the principles of the kingdom, which causes now God's ability and his strength to empower you in your inability. We all have inabilities. We all were slaves to sin. However, through the grace of God and by grace through faith, we ask, have access to the inheritance of Christ living inside of us. And we can explore all that he has for us when we begin to acknowledge it, accept it, and begin to explore it. The challenge is, I think, sometimes we hear the word of God, and then we let some things slip. I think that's where we left off last week. Sometimes we can hear things and just let it slip, and we can, or we can, say, or we, we can say things like, I heard that before. So we don't take it to the value or the level in which we need to in order to explore it and put it in operation. We have to put the word of God in operation because faith without works is dead. So we can hear the word, but if we're not a doer of the word or we don't pursue it or prove it, like we said in 2 Timothy 3.16, prove it for ourselves, then, then the word is of none effect. And so we have to engage in it and allow it in our personal lives. And don't look for some big miraculous miracles. Don't look for that. We're not looking for signs. What we're looking for is the personal development of the individual in Christ. You identify Christ in your life, big, in your dreams, big, in vision, big, in business plans, big, in your family, big, restoring your family, restoring your loved ones, healing your loved ones. Because of the faith that you have in the words you heard and you're operating in it by grace. Okay, let's keep on going with this scripture. All right, so I'll, I'll start with those bunny trusts. Let's go ahead and dig into it. It says, therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. That's the operating system. Not, a, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of what? Faith of Abraham. That's what I was saying. That's, that's what I was just mentioning to you. That's what it is. It is the operating system of the kingdom of God. If we try to go out and start another operating system, it's not going to work. So if it's not working in our lives, it might be because we are trying to take an idea that we've developed over time and place it in a system that it doesn't work in. Or, or if, if, the, if the word of God is not working in our lives, we're off. Something we're doing. Because the word of God is not of null effect. It has power. It has ability. To give to us everything that it says and he has promised in it. So then the question becomes, how are we pursuing it? What are we doing? How much are we investing in it? Are we sowing to the spirit? Are we doing the things we're supposed to do there? Are we, are, are we crucifying the flesh and denying ourselves so that we can grow in the spirit? Are we examining the word? Are we going back and examining the word? Are we letting the word slip? You know, I, I want to share another scripture with you all. I want, you know, Jesus gave this parable and originally I wasn't going to go here, but I, I want to go here. I want to share this scripture because this is required. I want Jesus gave a parable on the sower sows the word. I want to talk about that a little bit because at the end of the day, we all are responsible for working out our soul salvation. We're responsible for that. We, we own that process. And so we want to engage in that at a high capacity, at a high level, not for anyone else, but for ourselves. We got to prove this for ourselves. Amen. Praise God. All right. So I want to show you that you need this because it is, is, is this this principle is a is a functioning operating principle in the kingdom of God. 
And, um, you know, how we receive the word is, is very important. So let's go look at a uh, parable. I wasn't planning on sharing this with you all. I actually had a different one. Um, but he just brought this up to me, and I want to share it to, with you. Hold on a moment. Uh, so let's go over to, uh, let's take a look here. Hold on. Let's see here. Uh, let's go to Mark 4. And uh, actually, let's let's start with uh, let's start with Mark four and one. Mark four and one. Let me just bring this over because uh, again, I wasn't expecting to share this, but I, I want to read this scripture to you. Uh, let let's read this parable that Jesus was was. Uh, now there, let me give you some background. Jesus is on his boat. Okay, he just got finished healing some people. You know, he's working. This is his job. He's doing ministry. And you've got a background, uh, you know, a bunch of people gathering, you know, it's a multitude of folks. So, of course, everyone comes with different personality types. They've got different opinions, different views. Some of them have been studying the law and they know more than Jesus. Some of them have, they got all kind of stuff in this crowd. So let's go to 4-1. Grab your Bibles, look at it with me. Don't let me just read it to you. Let's go to, let's go to 4-1. It says, and again, he began to teach by the sea. Now, again, I wasn't planning on sharing the scripture, but Holy Spirit just told me to teach it. So I want, to, I want you to get this because this is important. And again, he began to teach by the sea. And a great multitude was gathered to him. So a great multitude, it doesn't give us a number, but we know at, least, at, at best, it's a lot of people here. So that means different personalities, different attitudes, different perspectives. Come on, take your mind there. You know, stand in a crowd with a bunch of people. Think about a concert or a church service that you went to where it was 500 people or more. You, know, you got all kind of people in this crowd. So your mind has to go there and think about what Jesus was dealing with as a teacher. OK, so you got all these people with this mindset. And then he said they were all gathered together so that it was so bad that he got into the boat. So that tells you this was a crowd because Jesus, you know, he's talking to people. And then he see all this crowd start gathering on a seashore. So, you know, that's plenty of space. And it was so bad that he said, okay, you know what? Let me get in this boat. I'm going to get in this boat and I'm going to teach back to him this way. Because if I don't, he probably, I could imagine, you know, my mind tells me people probably was pushing up on him and stuff like that. So he probably said, let me just get in this boat. Okay. Again, we're just doing some practical teaching. I want you all to see this. Uh, and he said, so that he got into the boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. So it tells you. All of them are eager to hear what this man has to say. But again, imagine a multitude with a bunch of people with all different perspectives, because you get I guarantee you right now, you're not thinking what the other person online with us are thinking right now. So they've all got different mentalities, different mindsets. OK. All right. Let's keep going. It says, then he taught them many things by parables. And there's a reason for that. I won't go into it. and said to them in his teaching, listen. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. Now notice he's talking to a multitude of people. And he's given an analogy or a parable of, you know what? A sower went out to sow. Okay. And he went to go sow these seeds. And some fell by the wayside and the birds of the air came and devoured them. Devour what? The seeds. Okay, let's keep going. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. So now we're talking about two different type of people or two different type of things he's talking about. One sold on the wayside, one sold on uh, stony ground. But the, the sower did one thing, sold. He just sold it. Okay, let's keep going. Then verse six says, but when the sun was up, it had it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And then let's go verse seven. And some seed. Now, this was a third type. And some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew and choked it and it yielded no crop. So okay, um, I want you to take your imagination and I want you to go in your backyard with me. And I want you to plant some, whatever your favorite vegetable is. Okay. Onions, whatever. I'm as onions. I love onions and cucumbers. So, you know, you, you plant that, right? And imagine planting it 
and then nothing comes up. This is the what the parable is that he's referring to, and this is three different types of parables that he's talking about. Okay, All right. Let's go to the next one. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up. Well, that sounds real good to me so far. But watch this. Notice this piece. This piece is very important, too. It sprang up and increased and produced. Now, did you see that? So the kingdom of heaven, I want to tell you something, is all about production. He told Adam, be fruitful, multiply and replenish. The kingdom of heaven is all about you receiving more. He that has, more shall be given. It's always about that. He that has not, that which he has shall be taken. I want you to know these same verses of scripture that I'm bringing into play aligns with what we're reading now. But let's keep going. I want you to see how important it is to hold fast the words of the scriptures because, man, they're important. And it determines what we get. Let's keep going. It says increase and produce. Now watch this. Look at production. Watch production. Production some 30 fold. Production some 60 fold. Production some 100 fold. Now, no, I, A, I want to point out that he did not discuss anything about money right here. So if we were to put money in this conversation, then we have just changed the word because he didn't put word. He said we sold seed and the seed had production. And he's going to even define this. So your giving and your offering has nothing to do with this scripture. Okay. I want to say that because it's very, it's a very common scripture that's out there that's used for an offering. This is all about how much production on the word we're going to get. Because if we get production on the word, the kingdom is advancing in us. It, the kingdom inside of us, man, it's, it's, it's blowing our mind. Our mind is being renewed to it. It's being restored to it. We, we're being restored back to the spirit of life. We're walking in the spirit. Our conversation is in the spirit because we spend time talking about how to advance our kingdom. Praise God. That is his will. All right, let's keep going. Praise God. That's good news too, by the way. Now watch what he's about to say next. Look at what he's about to say next. He said, and he said to them, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So this is one of those things where, okay, Jesus is talking in parables and he's telling them, listen, I'm get, trying to sow something to you. But I understand that there are two types of people in the world. There are children of there are wheat and there are tear. There are children of darkness and children of light. There are those who adhere to the word and hold those who have no interest in the word. And he understood that in his crowd that there are all kinds of people that are there. So it is important. He's trying to tell them the importance of how much attentiveness that they need to have when it comes to the word and the kingdom and the teaching that he's providing. This is Jesus teaching. All right, let's keep going. It says, but when he was alone, now watch this. Remember, his disciples hung out with him. Watch this. It said, but he, when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable. So it wasn't just the disciples either. But look here. And he said to them, to you, it has, now, this is a big one here. Let's, let's look. To you, it has been given. To know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Did you see that? So it is a promise that God has made that he will cause you to know what the mystery of the kingdom of God is. And guess what? Before we go to that B side of the verse, <laughs> let me tell you something. He wants our eyes enlightened that we may come to know. What is the hope of our calling and the mystery of the fellowship of Christ? This is that same mystery that he's talking about. OK, let's keep going. Then it says, but to those who are outside. All things come in parables, meaning they don't quite get it. They don't quite understand it. They're not in pursuit of it. And I'm just sowing word is what he said. And I just want to see, you know, if you want this, you got to get it. You got to hunger for it. You got to thirst for it. Because if you hunger and thirst for it, remember he said, seek ye first kingdom of God and his righteousness. And blessed are they that hunger and thirst for, thirst for righteousness. Say, thirst for righteousness, for they shall be fed. If you hunger and thirst for God, God will grant unto you the mysteries of Christ because you have faith in his word. You're seeking him. And by grace, you're accessing by faith through grace. 
You're getting it through faith. You're accessing it by grace, through faith, by grace, through faith, by, faith, by grace. You are accessing grace and grace is granting unto you the salvation, the revelation, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Praise God. He is granting unto you all the things that people were destroyed for a lack of knowledge of. You're gaining because it was given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. So therefore, you should no longer be destroyed for a lack of knowledge, but your knowledge should be overflowing. Out of your belly should be flowing the rivers of the living water. You, your cup should just be running over because the spirit of life in you is granting you access to understanding the life and the mystery of Christ. So your understanding, your knowledge is more amplified than ever because the teacher is teaching you all things that pertain unto life and your God nature. He's bringing it all into your insight. Praise God. All right, let's keep going. I got to get through this verse. Uh, because he told me to share it with you. So look at the parable. Watch what he's about to do. So that seeing, and he's talking about those that are on the outside. So this tells you Jesus' attitude about his, his pearls and sharing his wisdom. Watch this. He goes, so that seeing that they may see not, that they may see and not perceive. So he said, I'm talking to them in the parable because it ain't for them to know the mysteries. Because so all these people that are there, you would think all of them facing the seaside, all of them are hungry for the word, all of them seem to be ready for the word. It seemed like Jesus, I mean, based on some stuff I see, you know, I've heard over the years, it seemed like Jesus was saying it ain't for them. Let's read it. It says outside, that's verse 11 on the B side of the verse, it says, but those who are outside, all things come in parables. Then he goes on to say, so that seeing they may see not and not perceive. And then it goes on to say, and hearing they may hear not and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven. So how we come and how prepared we are in our motivation for hearing the word determines how, what we get back on the word. Now watch what else he's going to say. Now this is Jesus talking. This is the one who mastered this thing, who perfected this thing. You know, he perfected. Like, that's why they called him master, because he perfected this thing as a man. And he told us to follow after him. And we were supposed to walk after his likeness. Now, that goes against common teaching. You know, could you imagine being a saint and a Christian, and you say, well, I ain't going to share this word because <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> it's, it's, it, look, I'm going to speak in this parable so you don't get it. Yeah, right. Most preachers want you to get it, right? Well, you saw what Jesus just said. I didn't say it. All right, let's keep going. The source sows the word, verse 14. Verse 15 says, and these are the ones who, ones by the wayside where the word is sown. So now we know we're talking about people and he's talking about an operation. Watch this. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Well, guess what? Now you understand a principle of when the word is sown. Because immediately when the word is given, you can anticipate in some cases, Satan's going to try to come and attack the word that's inside of you and uproot it fast. And how does he do that? Test trials and tribulations. You have people fighting against you. You didn't even, you, you never had a problem with. It. And now you fight with them. You at work feeling like everybody after you. <laughs> Trust me. Been there. You know, so why? Because you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities whose influence in their behavior. They have the they have place. Remember, his goal was to sit on the mount of the congregation. So he tries to sit in the ideas and the imagination and cause conflict, cause confusion. That's what he does. So when you've got somebody coming up against you, don't worry about it. It's not them. It's what's in them. And you have to speak to that because it's challenging the word inside of you. It's challenging and trying to test the word inside of you. For what? For the very thing Jesus just said. He said the wayside. Well, what happens on the wayside? If you go back up, it, 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 the wayside, what happens is it, it just kind of sown and then it dries up. It don't have no growth. So there's no production on the word because Satan's trying to stop you from having production. Praise the Lord. 
But guess what? If we don't understand this principle, when we have trouble, test, and trial, when we have loved ones that are passing away on us, when wives and husbands, are, when, you, when you're going to the job and folks are against you, when, you know, when you got all these things, many are the affliction of the righteous. You're part of the kingdom. You're an ambassador of a world that's trying to overtake this system, this Babylonian system that you have. You see it in our own White House. We're sitting back battling against two systems in one, one world. Listen, we need God system and operation in our planet. And the only way to do that is, is to understand what causes it not to operate. Let's keep going. OK, let's let's keep going. So then it says Satan comes immediately and takes away the word which is sown in their hearts. And remember, I taught you this isn't your heart. This is your heart, because so as a man thinketh in his heart, this the soul of man is the heart of man. It is the one thing that never dies. The man may leave the body. And remember, God breathed into man's nostrils and he became a living soul. The heart of the man is the soul. And that's what Satan's after, the soul. He wants to be the one to influence the thoughts of people, the ideas of people, and control that. Sit in the mount of the congregation. That was his goal. We've been read that. I won't go back into that. All right. Now, look at the second person. That's one person. Look at, it, look at another one. These, likewise, are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they heard the word. Now, this is, this is, this is a common one. I've had this one, too. I think I've been some of all of this because of the process of growth, being able to identify that, you know, if you're in this equation, you can see it and then being able to identify, you could challenge it. But if you don't know, you perish from the production of the word. But because we understand we're not destroyed for a lack of knowledge because we understand it's been given to us to know the mysteries. We understand how things work. We understand the operation. However, there was a time when I didn't and I didn't understand why I would always have challenges in my marriage or different places. I'm not even saying now I'm saying this was years ago, but I still have same challenges that we face certain things that I couldn't overcome. And they would always challenge the word. I go to church and the next thing you know, I'm facing something. It was always trying to steal the word, but I didn't understand why. And then the Holy Spirit began to help me understand why. Why would he want me to know this so that I could overcome and become the good ground? If I have an awareness, I then know how to respond correctly. Let's keep going. These likewise, verse 16, these likewise are the ones sown on good stony ground who, when they heard the word, very common, immediately received it with gladness. Anybody see that right there? Just close your eyes and imagine for a minute. Just think back when somebody gave a word and everybody got excited. Right. Everybody got super excited. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shouting and dancing and everything else. We heard the word, received it with gladness. Praise God. But watch this. Look, watch this. And they have no root in themselves. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to give you a scripture. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the, uh, uh, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate. Why meditate? Because that is a command or a order or a description of what God instructed us to do. Deuteronomy 28. If you, oh God, I gotta read it. Okay, let me get Deuteronomy. Okay, so that's a command. So you're meditating in it day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of what? Living water. Who bring forth what? Fruit in this season. Can y'all see how that will play here? He bring forth fruit in this season because why? The word was sown into him. He meditated it. So don't just read the word. The, the law that God gave is that we should meditate in his word day and night. Because when we meditate, then our roots are found in the word. Does that make sense? You, you get all rooted in it and grounded in it. And you're not moved. You know, you're like a tree planted by the rivers of living water who bring forth its fruit in this season. And its leaf doesn't wither. And when does leaves wither? It's when the elements of life hits it. So Satan hits you with the elements of life and your leaf won't wither because of the fact that you're rooted because you've been meditating God's word. It means to think on it and speak it out loud. I don't care what people say. You say the word. Say it to yourself. I don't care if you have to walk through your house and talk to yourself. Talk to yourself the word. What did God say? you got God living on the inside of you. You should be communicating with the God in you. I know I do. I'm a community. I'm going to talk to him. I don't care what you think. I'm going to talk to God inside of me because he dwells in me. He lives in me. He is one with me. Remember this? If you abide in me and my word abide in you, me and my father will come and make our residence, our abode. We'll live within the temple that's not made with hands. You know, you can have a conversation with God. Amen. Praise God. Man, that's good news. 
That is good news because you got a relationship that nobody else can take away from you. Praise God. Glory to God. Now look at this. This thing has no root in themselves. Verse 17. And so endure for a time afterward. Watch this. Look at how Satan does. When tribulation. That's why the writer wrote. He said, blessed is the man who endured temptation for when he has been tried. He shall receive a crown of life. A lot of people think that's when we die. And all. No, the crown of life is more revelation in the thought life where God is expanding your understanding. He will crown you with the life of the kingdom of God. He will crown you with the life of the understanding and revelation knowledge of the mystery of Christ. We need to understand the Christ in us, that treasure in the earthen vessel where the kingdom of heaven abides. Maybe he said, they'll say, lo, the air, the kingdom, lo, there, the kingdom. But I say the kingdom is where? Inside of you. And if the, this treasure which is inside of you has the ability to teach you, guide you, lead you, instruct you, and bring you into the promise of your inheritance. Somebody say praise the Lord. Glory to God. God will bring you into your promise. And that is his will. Praise God. Let's keep going, man. I want to stay there, but I'll keep going. And, and meditating his word is a law of the kingdom. I'm going to show you that. Go to You write down Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Just write that down. I want you to go back and listen to the original instructions that God gave to Israel when he was establishing his physical uh, uh, body and making his blueprint in the earth. Go look at that and see what he told them. You got to meditate the word. You got to hearken unto the word. This is the same principle right here. Jesus picking it up in the New Testament. Okay, so there's a there's an order in which he put in place that we got to follow. And when we operate in it, man, it begins to speak. It got a voice. Praise God. All right, let's keep going. We're just about done. We only got a few more minutes, so uh, let's 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 try to dig into this. These likewise are they. Verse sixteen. These likewise are, are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. Verse seventeen. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. Afterward, here it is. Here's the problem. When tribulation and persecution arises for what? The word's sake. The word's sake. Why is it arising? Because I believe the word is trying to show itself strong. What test didn't Jesus overcome? When he was in the wilderness and he was tempted or tested, that was his test. Next thing you know, when he overcame it, he got into the operation of the kingdom. Because immediately after the third temptation, he said, on this day, you're going to see angels ascending and descending. Well, what was he saying? He was saying, just like what I taught y'all last week, I'm operating in the salvation plan as a man. So I got angels ministering on my behalf. Remember, Shall they not all uh, be, are they not all called to be ministers of those who shall become heirs of salvation? I showed you that last week as what's part of our inheritance that's been laid up. But the question is, is are we are we aware of it? Have Are we in the operating system of it? Well, we have angels working on our behalf. OK, so Jesus, he knew that. And when he overcame, he got crowned with that life, man. And when you overcome, blessed is the man who endured temptation. When he has been tried, when you overcome, you can get crowned with life, too. I don't know what portion you're going to get, but you can get 30. You can get 60 or you can get 100 for return and have the word of God working in you big. When you got so much revelation, you're seeing God's hand moving your life all day, every day, throughout the day. I mean, you just you know what's around you. You know what's working for you. The benefit package is working. Whatever you lay your hands to will be blessed. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed when you come out. Blessed when you go in. Yeah, that's just the benefit package. We don't preach the blessing because that's just the benefit package. That just comes with the package. We, we preach Christ and him crucified, giving you access to his kingdom, granting you Granting you access to the Christ inside of you who's filled with all this knowledge, who's filled with all this power, who's filled with all this glory. And he could take you from faith to faith and from faith to faith and to glory to glory, meaning he can help to develop you in this operation called the kingdom of life or the kingdom of God or the kingdom of our Savior and Lord or being saved or all those other fancy words that all mean the same. Praise God. Praise the Lord, man. This is good news. This is the gospel. See, they say gospel is good news. This is good news. You don't have to be a slave to that serpent of old who is determined to make you fail. No, you will overcome. You were made to be an overcomer. And you can do all things through that treasure 
through that kingdom that's inside of you because you're tapping into the grace by faith. And grace is granting you access to his power. Grace is granting you access to his promises. Grace is granting you access to the kingdom. You are right now living literally in the dispensation of grace. And in this dispensation, there is a promise. We are the age that they spoke of in the book. And when you seek the kingdom, you're going to find there's an abundance of overflow for you. Now, let me keep reading because I'll stay right there for another 30 minutes. I could do this all day. I don't know if you know that or not. So let me stay within my time frame. Let's keep going. Uh, verse 18 says, now these are those that are sown among thorns. Now, I would, I could show you in uh, Genesis where God told Adam, he said, from thorns and thistles, it was part of the curse. He said, through thorns and thistles shall it yield seed to you. What he was talking about with Adam, you know, which was part of the curse is, is that life is going to challenge you now for what you should have gotten free. In other words, you were supposed to be in the garden with me. You were supposed to be walking with me in the garden. You were supposed to every time we walk together, you were going to agree with the things that I share with you. Now you see yourself naked. So you've been kicked out of the garden and you don't have that freely anymore. You've got this test and this tribulation challenging the word that I would have gave you for free had you not failed. And Jesus restored the relationship. So there is no fall no more. And Jesus, he eliminated the effects of death. So there is no death no more. So now we're back to Enoch and Adam's original position. We walk with God with no interruption in the flow of hearing his voice. And my sheep hear my voice and another one they won't follow. Praise God, because you're investing in the kingdom and these thorns and thistles right here. Watch this ground. Look at what it does. Now, these are the, the ones that were sown among thorns and thistles. They the ones who hear the word and watch this. The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. In other words, the word has no production. That's not God's will. And so, but how were you attacked? How was the word of God attacking you well, we're, or in us? Because we're worried about what was happening inside the world. We were too busy chasing finances and not chasing God. That's not, we got our order. That's part of the blessing. You shouldn't have to chase the money. You should be chasing God. We chase God. And then the money follows us. The blessing follows us. It's shake down, pressing together, running over. See, but it can't be pressed down, shaking together, running over when we're not chasing God. You chase God first. And then the, the, the benefit package will kick in. The benefits are last on the total pole, man. The rubies and gold are nothing. The presence of God is what we want. The richness of his presence, having access to his throne, being able to talk to him confidently with boldness and know that he hears you and you don't think it, you know it. You don't, you don't, you don't try to believe it, you know it. You can't nobody change your mind about it. Amen. Praise God. All right. And when tribulation persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Stumble at work. Stumble at the word that they heard. They heard the word, the word told them they could have certain things. And they miss it because of all these different things that's happening to them. And then they start, stop believing. But watch this. These are, Jesus is describing all these different grounds or types of people. So he's helping us to see. Remember he said, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. So he's letting us know you can be attentive to this and come to understand this. Remember he said it's been given for you to know. So you can come to understand this and, and, and self-examine and go, well, what kind of ground am I? What am I doing? What, what? And we all have to cross that self-examination point. What am I doing? Can I, can I do better? What, what else can I do to enhance this spiritual development with sowing to the spirit and getting back? What else can I do? What's preventing me? I challenge you to move all the obstacles because if we remove them, we'll find God in a higher and greater way. We'll find our kingdom working for us. We'll be able to see the operation in our day-to-day -day life. Nothing fancy where other people, you know, we don't have to be raining fire from heaven. In your day-to-day -day life, you will see the spirit or God working with you, giving you truth and giving you his spirit so that you could worship him in spirit 
and in truth because you're walking in the spirit developing in the spirit he's giving you the word or teaching you so you're getting the truth and no longer is the father of lies causing deception to you let's go look at this last ground looks like this is where the holy ghost wanted us today i was not planning on doing this today i had some i had something that works with this but it was a little bit different totally different but obviously this is what we need all right let's keep going uh, verse 19 says, And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Now, these are all his definitions. Now, verse 20. But these are the ones sown on good ground. He's like, these are the ones. Which, which ones was he talking to? I guarantee you. Because remember, he started off the conversation going, there was a multitude. And then all of a sudden, they called him off privately. So I don't think the multitude was there. My mind tells me it wasn't. And, and then he went to describe, uh, he said to them, he said, you know what, it's been given for you to know the mysteries, but to the outer, it wasn't given. So, so what does that mean? That means that you're close enough to get what I have to help you be productive. You're close enough to where you could see this thing working when I'm not even present. You, my word is so powerful, you could take it. And you're going to get some production out of it. I'll leave and my word will still be with you. I'll walk away and my word will still be with you. I, I, you know what? I won't have another word to teach you because my word will be speaking to you. Because the one that lives inside of you will be giving you definition of, of what I said to you. He'll be reminding you of the things which I've said unto you. He'll bring to your remembrance those things that I've said. And then he'll put clarity on those things. And he'll help you understand them better. And that's an operation of our kingdom. Praise God. All right. And look, let's look. And, but these are the ones sown among good ground, those who hear the word, see that? And then what else? Accept the word. And when you hear the word and we accept the word, then it drives action. It causes you to by, enter into grace. So by faith, you heard the word. By faith, you accepted the word. And then the word granted you access into the grace. So you're saved by grace by grace, you inherit the promise, but it's through faith in the word of God. You see that? Okay. These are the good grounds. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Meaning, remember we read 2 Timothy 3.16 and said, all scripts were given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit are profitable. Profitable. That wasn't just a verse. Profitable for doctrine, correction, instruction. And to prove, see that there? So you're, you're bringing forth fruit of the kingdom. Meaning, you've been walking with the king, so the king is giving you revelations of the mystery of the kingdom, and now you can share that revelation with others. They can come to you, when you open up your mouth, you speak things that the, the God in you have given you, and revelation that the God in you have given you, and they're eating from the fruit of the Spirit of God that's in you. This is a little different than the 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 the, the, the gifts or the fruit of the Spirit with love, joy, peace. Yeah, they're gonna get that. But we're talking about revelation specifically because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And I hope that all of you are still doing the foundational things that we talked about, which is seek ye first. You don't need a hundred people to do that. That's great when we all come together corporately and everybody carrying the spirit of Christ inside of them. And then he sit on us and put his weight on us to the point where you could feel his presence. That's great. I love church. I love that. However, you don't need a hundred. You don't need 50. You don't need 20. Jesus did it with 12. And he was able to get them to feel the presence of God in their personal lives to the point that it was speaking to him. Remember when Peter was like, he said, hey, Peter, who do men say I am? He said, who do these people say I am? All these people around him. He said, who do, who do they say I am? And then they was like, well, some of them saying you Elijah. You, you didn't came back, you know, because Elijah was taken, right? So some of you say you're Elijah. He said, no. Then he said, some of them say you're a prophet. You know, you're like John, okay? They all had their own expression because they weren't in the inner court. They weren't in the inner space. They weren't around him to see him as he was. And so he went to Peter and said, well, <laughs> we've been spending a little time together. Who do you say I am? And then Peter said, thou art the Christ. Okay. How did he know that? Because Christ was beginning developed in him. Then he said, son of the living God. 
Oh God, Christ will help you with your sonship. He will help you to be an heir to joint heir together of the commonwealth of Israel. Christ in you, he will identify you as a son, an heir, a joint heir together. And then Jesus, notice his response. He said, flesh and blood has not told you that. You see that? He said, You've been talking to God. He said, but my father, which is in heaven or flesh and blood, the real translation said has not revealed and it's been given to you to know the mysteries or the revealing of the kingdom. And he said, upon that, I'm going to build my rock. I'm going to build my church on that rock right there. Upon that rock, I'm going to build my church. I am going to build my last day church on revelation of who I am. And I promise you, if you sow and you seek, the last part of this verse said, some bear fruit, some 30-fold. Some bear fruit, some 60-fold. And some bear fruit, some hundredfold. Whatever your percentage, percentage on the return of the word of God you get, notice you're getting a return. And as long as you're getting a return, we're doing good. So keep on seeking. Keep on hungering. Keep on thirsting. Our Savior is coming. And we're living in a day where the wheat is taking their position in the world and the tear is taking their position in the world. I promise you, he's coming. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the word that's sown today. We thank you that it's sown on good ground. Yes, Father. It's sown in the hearts of your people, your believers, those who understand the truth about your word and the need to desire to seek you, to give an ear to the things they've heard, a, a strong ear so it doesn't slip. We don't take it lightly, but we put it into practice. And that we meditate your word so that we can get the most return on everything that the spirit of God can bring unto us. And as we sow the word of God into our hearts or into good ground, that the Holy Spirit, the teacher, will come in and remind us of the things we've sown and then bring highlight to it. Bring understanding and revelation to it so that the eyes of our understanding can become enlightened. And we know what is the hope, H-O-P-E, of the call of where you call this generation and these people in this hour and in this time. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in your people, in their families, in their home, in their children. And God, in spite of what it looks like, we don't walk by what we see. We're not moved by our emotional disturbances. So Father, I pray right now for those who are having an emotional challenge right now. And your emotions is all over the place. I speak peace to your soul and that those winds of life will settle and that your mind will be at peace and you will find refuge in the safety of the under the shadow of the almighty. Fear not, for God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power and a sound mind. I pray your mind be sound and that the word be productive in the name of Jesus. We pray. Thank God. Amen. Well